This whole Northwestern scandal is somewhat complex, and there are still a lot of unknowns out there. But after the firing of head coach Pat Fitzgerald, it's something that we have to talk about and dive into. Now, since both sides are saying opposite things when it comes to whether or not the coaching staff knew about this hazing, we have to look at each side equally. Now, on one hand, hazing, just like anything in life, can be bad if it's taken to the extreme. You have rookies in the NFL that have to stand up on tables and sing or pay for expensive team dinners, and that's fine. Freshmen having to carry pads or do skits in front of the whole team and athletic department, it's part of the process. And there are even players that are on leadership councils that help determine punishments or give updates to the coaching staff on how the team is doing, and that's great. But having a group of older players ritualistically wear masks, turn off the lights, and dry hump the hell out of a young player for making a mistake? Well, that's just too far. Now, if you've ever been in a locker room, then you know funny stuff goes down. Hell, I was part of the generation of doing the party boy. And there's sexual jokes that get made all the time in locker rooms. It's a guy thing. Blaine always talks about slapping butts and tapping nuts. But never did we turn it into some sacred ritual performed by a team gang as punishment. Now, I think we can all agree that's just over the line and, well, it's flat out weird as hell. Now, the question of if that's wrong isn't the big mystery here. The mystery is whether or not Pat Fitzgerald and his staff knew about it. Now, the university at first suspended him for two weeks after the feeling was that he didn't really know about it, but then the Daily Northwestern posted a piece with a sourcing from a former player saying the coaches knew all about it, and the firestorm that followed led to Fitzgerald's dismissal. Now, there are some players saying that this source was on some sort of mission to get the head coach fired, and the legal process is going to play out regarding that. But after having been in the college coaching game for almost a decade, I find it very hard to believe that the coaches didn't know. Now, Fitzgerald is the type coach that knows the goings-on in his program. He's organized, and attempting to hide something like this in his style of program is damn near impossible. Now, if he did know about this alleged hazing and didn't do anything about it with the Shrek gang, then he deserved to be let go. I agree with that. And to be honest, I'm surprised this situation is unfolding the way it is and that it's really even happening regardless. Now, the biggest piece of irony is that Northwestern is known for its journalism prowess. And in this case, they literally ate their own with it. It's like a blacksmith getting killed by a sword. Now, there are many unknowns still left to play out. And now Northwestern must find a new head man to lead the football team. Let's just hope whoever the new guy is doesn't walk into the building with the lights off. You can take your style to the next level with Indochino. Dressing for success can help you look better and be more confident. So whether you're attending that important meeting, our networking event, or simply want to impress your colleagues, our friends at Indochino have everything you need from business casual, dress shirts, camp shirts, and even blazers. Indochino offers a wide variety of options for every occasion. I'm rocking an Indochino shirt right now, all right? And it's super comfortable. And you can look on your screen and see some of the fly suits. They got different colors. You look, they got blue, banana yellow. All right, they got nectarine or tangerine or whatever color that is right there. They got all the colors, all the rainbow wheel colors uh, that you can find. And you know how I mean that. Uh, David, you've ordered a suit. I have the ordering ordered process was really easy, yep. and you're looking absolutely suave. It's a James Bond situation. Thank you, sir. This is not my Indochino suit, but I do have it right back there in the back. Got the gray one. Wearing it this weekend to a wedding. There you go. There you it's go. that easy. And the camp shirts from Indochino are the perfect addition to your summer wardrobe. So check out their site and browse through the options. They literally have a perfect shirt for the beach, barbecue, camping, tailgating, any occasion, really. Pineapple banana shirt, fierce tiger shirts, and classic florals. Come on, man. It's a smorgasbord of awesomeness. Yes, All right, so take your side of the next level with Indochino. Go to Indochino.com. That's I-N-D-O-C-I-H, or excuse me, I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. Yeah. Use our code BOOSTER to get 10% off any purchase, 399 bucks or more. Say 399 bucks. That's a lot. No, it's not when you're buying clothes like this. If you've ever had to buy nice clothes before, this is an absolute steal. That's I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. Promo code BOOSTER. Take your style to the next Get level. Get yourself a nice suit. I'm going to go ahead and bring Don't in former that. Michigan quarterback David Cohn. It's rough. My brother, former Western State Colorado wide receiver Blaine Crane. Guys, we all been in locker rooms. Oh, yeah. Right? We joke about stuff. Guys do funny stuff in locker rooms. But like I said, having this performed ritualistically, I mean, that's 
That's just out of bounds to me, David. I hate this for everyone involved. I hate this for the kids that had to go through it. I hate it for their families, and I hate it for Pat's fit. Pat Fitzgerald, we're talking about a man who's been with this university for 25 years, you know, played for this university for four years, was an assistant coach, is now, uh, was now the head coach for over 17 seasons. I mean, led Northwestern to two Big Ten championship game appearances in the last five years. I hate this for him. When we talk about what should a coach know and what shouldn't a coach know, yeah, I mean, look, the buck has to stop with you. I think the university in their statement put out, they said the head coach is ultimately responsible for the team culture. That's 100% accurate. But, you know, how much does he have to know about everything that's going on? For, for instance, should Kirby Smart be fired from the University of Georgia because some of his players get in a car and drive really fast and get in trouble. I don't think he should be. And newsflash, he won't be. Yeah. Okay. So that's the ultimate question is what exactly did Pat Fitzgerald know? And of the things that he didn't know, should he have and was there an oversight there? This is not going to stop anytime soon because Pat Fitzgerald is saying that he shouldn't have been fired with cause and that, you know, there was a two-week suspension. And so this is going to be playing out for some time. But like you said, I've been involved in, in a lot of locker rooms. Most Mostly it was teaching the young guys, the freshmen, to stay in, to know their place early on when they got to a school and you know not come into the upperclassmen locker room or having to sing a song in front of the full team. I don't understand why we've just become obsessed with this sexualization in college locker rooms with hazing. We saw the New Mexico State yeah. scandal that happened with the basketball team. And you know, I know that Pat Fitzgerald obviously is the guy who's gonna get blamed for this and he's gonna lose his job, but like just look around our society right now and our culture. You know, we're advocating this sexuality at every single turn, every commercial that's on TV, every television program. We have an entire month dedicated to gay pride right now, so it shouldn't be surprising to anyone to see this overly sexualized activity when it comes to locker rooms. Blaine, and, and nowadays, you know, it, it used to be if something like this was happening, you could really keep it in-house without the internet and social media. You're not hiding it nowadays, but when you, when you look at it, it kind of from a 30,000-foot view, number one, how many other places do you think do something like this? And do you agree that Pat Fitzgerald should have been fired? Okay, one, um, I don't think a lot of other places are doing stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they dare, uh, dubbed the term running is what it's called. And I am surprised, one, uh, when it comes to any program, when 12 guys turn the lights off, put a mask on, and basically air hump a kid. They V for vendetta. Though. Yeah, so I will be surprised by that. I think everyone should be surprised by that, especially a team coached by Pat Fitzgerald. There's a lot of coaches out there that maybe I could see this going on to a certain extent, but this guy at Northwestern is damn sure not one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I think when, when you look right now, players, there's a certain amount of players that have came out over the weekend. I believe I counted 14 that came over and had said something mm -hmm. of this was going on to a certain extent at Northwestern. And you are in control of the culture of your team. Um, it's different when it comes to speeding. Um, that's not something really you can control. But stuff like this that's supposedly been going on for years in this program, it's something Pat Fitzgerald did his job and his assistant coaches to know something like this you is going You had to know. There's I no way, there is no possible way, if this has happened over multiple years, if you're a head coach of a football team, that you want to be successful, that you know most of the in and outs that goes on in a program, that you don't know this is going on. So I think Pat Fitzgerald did know what's going on. I think his assistant coaches knew what's going on. And I think there's a reason for him to get fired. So I think at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, Pat Fitzgerald will not be reinstated at Northwestern. I think he's done. I think he should be done. There's levels to everything. You can always tap nuts and slap butts to a certain, to a certain extent when it comes to team chemistry. <laughs> but stuff like this is just disgusting, appalling. And I know society, where we've been more sexualized than ever, but so, uh, I, there's no excuse yeah. for something like this to go on at a football program. Yeah, the fear of the repercussions of what would happen if the coach did find out should should nip, should have nipped this thing in the butt a long time ago. I will say a couple names to keep an eye on. Paul Christ, mm. who was let go from Wisconsin. Jim Leonard, who was the interim coach of Wisconsin, yeah. was going to let go. And another name I saw today, I'm trying to remember, who said on Twitter that I didn't even think about, Byron Lefwich. That's interesting Iron too. Lefwich. Paul Chris, yeah. though, man, yeah. that just this has his name written all over it, all right? Over it, all over it, like a like a fat kid on a Big Mac. Hey, YouTube, appreciate you guys. Make sure you subscribe. We're back talking college football with Collins. You won't find a better place.